There are thousands of customizations you can make to Microsoft OneNote if you have OneTastic at your disposal. In this video, we're going to talk about five macros that I use on a regular basis inside of OneNote, and I think you should get them right now. Hey everybody, it's Neil Malik from Knack Training, and today's Everyday Office video is about using OneTastic macros inside of Microsoft OneNote. So let's get this uh, started correctly. Let me just go ahead and pop this up. If you go to getonetastic.com, you can get the OneTastic plugin. You can use that for free. Then notice here on the pricing tab that when we talk about macros specifically, you can download macros from Macroland and use them up to 500 times uh, under the free plan. You can also use the basic macro editor for free, but you don't have undo and read do in the macro editor, you don't have cut, copy, and paste in the macro editor, and you have a limit to the number of times you can use macros overall. So you may want to look at the pro level or the dev level subscriptions to OneTastic uh, in order to use this really thoroughly, uh, but you can do a lot of stuff with the free subscription. Now let's take a look at the OneTastic uh, macros that you can grab. Notice over here on the right hand side we have a download macros button and when you press that you load up a number of different macros with very popular ones up on the top and of course a bunch rest of the way down. And let's just go ahead and get started with some of the ones that are right up here in the most popular. Personally, I think everybody should have a table of contents in the current page, table of contents in the current notebook, and table of contents in the current section available to themselves, because these three are really helpful. Let me go ahead and demonstrate those. So you just click on any one of those three for the table of contents tool for that scope of your OneNote notebook. And then once you download it, once you install it, notice that I have a TOC button right up here. And so you can get the TOC for the current notebook, the current page, and the current section. So I'm going to go over here and click on my first tab and put a new page right up on top. So here's an untitled page, first page in the first section, and I'll call this one Table of Contents, right? And uh, it makes sense that I would want to be able to show through hyperlinks how to get to various different places in this notebook, especially if I'm sharing this with other people. So I click on the TOC drop-down menu. Say, so, yeah, make me a table of contents for the entirety of this notebook. Click on it. It uh, says, okay, um, do you want to make the scope of this links to the pages or links to the sections? I'm going to make the scope of this links to the pages. And notice here that if it detects that there's a table of contents on this page, it can always update that table of contents when stuff moves around. Uh, notice here, resilient mode links to pages that will work if they are renamed, uh, and fast links will no longer work if pages or sections are renamed. So if you have a really ridiculously huge notebook, you probably want to stick with fast link generation. Um, but if you've got a notebook like mine with just a couple of tabs, if Few pages on it, you might as well go resilient with your links so that if you accidentally renamed a tab or a page, uh, those links would still work. Okay, go ahead and click OK here. It processes, and there it is. You see that? You see how fast and easy this is? And how you get all of these hyperlinks that go to a section or to a page. So, you know, if you wanted to go and check on the meeting notes under initial planning meetings, it's very easy to go to the table of contents page and see how you would get to that specific page. Really nice tool. Everybody should have that. That's just a no-brainer. In the same way, again, if you go back to download macros, another one of these popular ones that's an absolute no-brainer is search and replace, right? So find a specific term, replace it with another term, and uh, what you can do is, let's say over here on the creative ideas, you see here I just use the term Acme Soap over and over again. If we came up with a creative brand name for it, it just just makes sense that I would use the find uh, option, the search and replace option underneath that button there. I could find the term uh, Acme Soap and replace it with uh, Awesome 
suds or whatever uh, and do that within this notebook or do that within this page let's say current page and if the capitalization was important I could click the checkbox there for match case and when I click OK it's you see here it's found and replaced four of them you see at first it, it, this always weirds me out like it seems like it should replace it before this dialogue opens up but when you click OK then you can see the awesome suds go into place there so find and replace just a, a no-brainer there now let's talk about your content drop down menu you see this one right here clean authors this is one of those things that especially when you're sharing this with outside contractors, with clients, things like that, it can be really important to um, strip out the metadata from your notebook. So again, if you go to download macros, you can type in the word clean. Uh, let's go ahead and hit retry here. There we go. Good. Okay, so here's the term clean. You'll see this a bunch, and you might decide to use some of these other ones. Take out, taking out the timestamps, right? Taking out the identifying timestamps that tell you when something was created could be useful. Uh, clean the authors out of a specific section. Clean the authors out of a specific scope. Um, but I've just chosen to grab this clean authors uh, macro because I think it can be a really useful thing to just say, okay, before this notebook gets shared with anybody else, let's make sure that we clean all the author information out of this notebook. And that's just as simple as clicking the content button, choosing clean authors, and it just runs through there and finds every single author uh, bit of information and pulls that out. Very simple, um, and it's very easy to understand why you might decide to do that, especially in a uh, a privileged situation where it was important that information wasn't shared. Okay, next up on the hit parade. In the same way that I've got my table of contents drop down menu, I love being able to create tag summaries. And even if you just use the tags for to do items. So let's say that every time you have a meeting, right, you would create a list of action items. That makes sense, right? Uh, action items from a meeting. And then you would, there we go, underline. And so when you create those action items, it also makes sense. Notice here I've got my to do tag, right? To do tag is just a checkbox and uh, it puts a checkbox onto the entry that you create. But it's also the sort of thing that people don't really recognize is this is actually a tag. It's tagging it as something, quote unquote, to do. So if you've got these to do items spread all over the place, again, let's go ahead and make uh, on the finding a marketing company section here, let's go ahead and make a page that has all of the two, oops, let's put it up here all of the to-do items from the notebook, right? So then, again, you can go to Download Macros and you search for tags. I'm gonna have to retry there. And when you search for tags, you'll notice the tag summaries. That's what we're talking about here. Now, I've chosen to go with the macro tag summary for a specific tag. I like this because it allows me to put in the name of a tag and then the scope for that tag, and then allow me to pull up basically a, um, you know, a checklist of things that I have to do. We have the tag summary with the page numbers. So there you've got um, all the tags and it tells you the page names that all the tags are on. So that might be a different way of approaching this problem or tag summary for the specific tag with the page name associated with it. That's another way of doing the same thing. So I just went with tag summary for specific tag. Play around with those three, see which one is your favorite. Uh, but here on the tag summary drop down menu, let's just go ahead and put this here. I use tag summary for a specific tag. I tell it, yeah, I want the to-do items. Notice I could also put other tags here, and I could say, um, I wanna see the to-do items that are about new products, or I wanna see the to-do items that are important. So you could say all the tags are on this thing at the same time, or at least one of the tags exists. And then you could say whether it's in the section or the notebook, right? and then sort them by what page they're on or when they were created. That's kind of an interesting choice there um, because you know, page by page basis makes sense, but it also makes sense to say, 
when did I make that tag? Maybe I can find it based off of its date. So I'll, I'll go ahead and leave it as page, but you can see where that would be useful. And then lastly, filtering. I always filter it so that it's only the unchecked items, right? That, why not? So you're finding the to-do items. I don't really care to find the checked to-do items. I only want the unchecked ones. And then I hit okay. And just like that, boom. See that? Look how easy that is. So on the page called Initial Planning Meetings, Chatter Buzz, uh, Anderson Wiley Intro Meeting. So Initial Planning Meetings, Chatter Buzz, Anderson Wiley. We have the action items of connect with social influencers and find trending tools. Uh, connect with social influencers and find trending tools and there are a few more on there as well and then in the budgeting section on the page called new product ideation we have forward the pdf and meet with alejandro and if i'm interested in seeing that i just click right on it and it shows me yeah here's your tagged item meet with alejandro so useful oh my god that that's that is above and beyond right there very very helpful okay uh, and then lastly, let's talk about your pages drop down menu. This can be so helpful because think about being in a meeting or something like that. So let's go to initial planning meetings, make a new meeting. This is a meeting uh, we have for um, organizing a team into roles, right? And uh, in this meeting, we say that we want to assign the roles of marketing coordinator, um, creative lead, and project manager. Okay, so these are three different things that we want to be able to do, three different roles that we need supported. It makes sense, to me at least, that these would be three different sub-pages, right? That there would be a sub-page devoted to the marketing coordinator position, there'd be a sub-page devoted to the creative lead position, and there'd be a sub-page devoted to the project manager position. So again, if you go to your download macros and you type in the search for sub pages, right? Right here. Insert subpages with the selected paragraphs as their titles. So if you grab a bunch of paragraphs and new paragraphs just every time you hit enter, it will make a new subpage based off the thing that you have selected. So let's try that, right? So I highlight the three paragraphs here, marketing coordinator, creative lead, and project manager. I go over here to pages and I say, insert subpages with the selected paragraphs as their titles. And click yes, boom, you see that? Oh my God, look how cool that is. Marketing coordinator, creative lead, and project manager are all now subpage titles and right up here at the top, these guys right here, these were where it came from. Now, if you want to go one level more complex, here's something that I really like, and this is the reason why I have two, whoops, two options here. This first one right here, subpage with selected text as title. Watch how cool this one is. So let's say I have another role here um, for, uh, let's see here, designer and I highlight just designer. So if I highlight one entry, and this one entry is another role and I want it to be a sub page under organizing teams into roles, it makes sense, right? I would go to pages, I would say insert a sub page with the selected text that I have here as its title. And when I click on it and click yes, it makes a new page called designer. You see here it makes a link that goes back to organizing the team into roles. And when I go to organizing the team into roles, that designer entry is a link to the page. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. I am a big, big fan of these macros. So definitely check out the following items. Cleaning the authors, just for making sure that if you're collaborating with somebody outside the business, that they don't see unnecessary information. Find and replace, that makes a ton of sense. Everybody needs find and replace sometimes. And then being able to create organization systems with either the table of contents tool or with tag summaries for specific tags.
And in the same way, you can create a structure for yourself using these tools to create subpages based on things that you have as lists in other major pages. Hope you guys learned a lot in this session. Uh, make sure you ping me if you need anything. Hit me up in the comments. Uh, hashtag AskEO, help at knacktraining.com. You get the picture. Talk to you soon.